Vous êtes belle, Rosalie. Welcome to this week's film show. Critic Lisa Nesselson joins us in the studio. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Olivia. Now, we're starting with a French film, Rosalie. This is loosely inspired by a real person, a young, optimistic woman engaged to a gruff bachelor who is somehow obliged to marry her. The unexpected element here is that Rosalie has a beard. We don't <laughs> often see that in stories, in movies. Uh, especially not bearded ladies who are... Richly drawn characters trying to forge an atmosphere of acceptance in surroundings tailor-made for rejection, violent rejection. Rural France in 1870 was not necessarily attuned to the benefits of uh, diversity and inclusion, however charming and hardworking the disconcerting new arrival may have been. Okay, well, here's a glimpse of a love story with a somewhat furry obstacle. Ça doit être quelque chose, quelqu'un qui vous aime comme ça. Sans condition. Ah Reste encore, s'il te plaît. Tu dois vivre ta vie de femme. Le chien va vous regarder. Mon père a essayé de tous les remettre quand j'étais petite. Vous êtes né comme ça. Vous m'avez menti. C'est monstrueux. Monstrueux C'est ça ta dot. Et le reste Mais j'ai besoin encore un peu de temps. Quel temps Il n'y en a plus du tout. J'espère juste que vous soyez différents. Et moi, que vous soyez comme les autres. So I hear you quite enjoyed this story. It's the story of Rosalie and Abel. Uh, yes, I let myself <clears throat> get whiskered away. Uh, <laughs> director Stephanie Degusto's first film, La Danseuse, The Dancer, eight years ago, was a lovingly made riff on a real woman, Loi Fuller, who was a Belle Epoque pioneer in using electric light effects to make dances with long swaths of fabric memorable. As with that film, here, the director recreates the fresh marvels of that day. Now a child can take a perfectly exposed color photograph in focus with the cell phone, but in 1870, a photographer had to synchronize a single-use chemical flash to his pressing of the shutter. Perhaps unwisely, Rosalie poses for a photographer whose studio offers props and backdrops to make fetching postcards, novelties in a world not yet overrun by photographic likenesses. To see something out of the ordinary back then could only have had an impact that it's hard for us to imagine. Okay, so in the film, Rosalie embraces her hairiness and that increases business for her husband's cafe where the locals come and gawp at her but not everyone's able to accept what they can see there. Well, you know, removing unwanted hair is a huge industry in the here and now, whether it's deforesting one's eyebrows or part of a person transitioning from uh, man to woman. But before laser treatments and chemical medications, the available tools were pretty much limited to shaving with a straight razor. In the annals of non-equality, it's interesting to note that a beard is considered a plus <laughs> in famous portraits of God or religious men of holy men of all stripes, but a woman with a beard is out of the question, disturbing, hard to look at without leering in amazement. It's just the placement of hair follicles and presumably a hormone imbalance, but the brain gets confused by the mixed message. Rosalie, played to perfection by Nadia Tereshkovich, is very lovely. Why should she be less lovely uh, when she lets her beard grow out for all to see? Benoit Majimel is Abel, who, in debt, agreed to marry Rosalie just for her dowry, um, grapples with that in touching and, I'd say, understandable ways. Okay, so you sold it there. Okay, well, we're staying in a rural setting in Romania this time. Holy Week uh, takes us back to the beginning of the 20th century. Tell us more about this one. Well, Andre Cohen's Holy Week, also known as Gefilte Fish or uh, Semaine Sainte here in France, depicts the escalating animosity between a Jewish innkeeper, Leba, and his Christian employee, Jorge, who vows revenge after he is fired. Now, from our 21st century view of labor relations, the terms of the dismissal look fair enough, uh, but the uh, handyman resented working for a Jew in the first place and is doubly yeah, insulted that his boss would dare to dismiss him with Easter right around the corner. It's a small enclave, there's no place else to go, and everybody knows everybody else's business, not conducive to Zen days and nights. This is a terrifying portrait 
of the building of justified fear in an atmosphere of omnipresent conflict. Okay, we hate each other's guts. Now what? Okay, sounds quite tense. Let's take a look. So this film is actually an adaptation of a novella called An Easter Candle. This is a famous part of Romanian literature. Yeah, kids study it in school. This film is extremely anchored in its time and place, and yet seems timeless because its themes keep cropping up whenever there are factions dead set against each other, often held hostage by unexamined tradition. The innkeeper's neighbors, his customers, are very comfortable expressing their outlandish beliefs about Jews out loud within earshot of the proprietor. This is a compellingly sinister portrait of prejudice and ignorance given free reign. And just a few decades later, being a Jew in the wrong place was nearly a guaranteed death sentence. Mm, so quite darkly prescient uh, in a way. Well, next to a Tunisian film out this week uh, called Behind the Mountains. It goes from Tunis to the mountains of the title. So a father can demonstrate something quite incredible to his young son, who he's not seen for some years. This film blends social reality and some magical elements as well. Tell us about it. Well, this is a semi-mystical tale of stubborn, stubborn, very stubborn determination. And it has the kind of visuals that make one grateful for carefully thought out cinematography. And it has one of the most gripping opening sequences I've seen in a while. An unassuming man enters a building via a bathroom window, grabs a metal pipe, enters an office full of people and starts busting up the place with incredible violence. Uh, and then he jumps out the window, which is that something we learn a little later. How do you jump out a window and survive? Hang on, can this guy Rafiq fly or something? <laughs> okay, well, let's take a look at Mohammed Ben Atiyah's Behind the Mountains. <laughs> There seem to be some doubts there about the laws of, of physics, but <laughs> Rafiq, the protagonist who we saw there, he has a novel approach to parenting. Indeed he does. He's been in prison for several years after freaking out in that office. His wife has written him off. His son, a smart boy with a gift for music, barely remembers him. So Rafi kidnaps his boy from school and drives him to the middle of nowhere. But there is definitely a method to his madness. OK, so overall, what's your verdict on the film? Did you enjoy it? Well, this lands squarely in the category of slow cinema, which, much like slow food, definitely uh, has its rewards. I enjoyed this blend of uh, seemingly predictable and absolutely unpredictable elements. OK. Well, finally, it's been 40 years since the original Ghostbusters brought its distinctive 1980s humour to pretty much the entire world. Mm -hmm. Out this week in France, we have the latest installment, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I recently learned the term legacy quill, a blend of legacy and sequel to denote a film with established characters where you get the original actors, if they're still alive and willing, and have them pass on the torch to new characters in a similar vein. Of the original crew, Harold Ramis is no longer with us, but Bill Murray and uh, Dan Aykroyd are good sports. They are indeed. Well, speaking of those new characters, France 24's Eve Jackson actually spoke to Paul Rudd recently here in Paris. Here's more on how he felt about being in the franchise that he first saw as a kid. It's surreal. Uh, it's strange to be a part of it all because I've grown up with it like, like we both have. Um, and it's an honor, it, but it, it's tough to put into words the feeling of actually driving the Ecto-1 or standing in a flight suit with the proton pack on my back, looking over and seeing Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson and Annie, um, 
it, it, it's it's like stepping in to a movie you've been watching your whole <laughs> life because that's what I'm doing, um, and it's very exciting. Now, is this offering original? Who cares? Uh, I find it amusing that often the same people who rush condemning a film for not being original, uh, for resembling movies they've seen before, will rejoice and embrace a new installment of a saga where the premise and the characters are firmly established and therefore predictable. Sometimes familiarity is comforting, I guess. It's certainly a series of films that has some serious staying power. It's been around for 40 years, so something's working there. Lisa, thank you so much for this week's roundup. We'll leave you with the familiar faces of that ghost-busting team, joined by a new generation fighting those supernatural evil forces in Ghostbusters' frozen empire. Well, do remember to check out our website for more movie news. That's here on France24.com. For the first time in New York history, people froze to death in the middle of July. What is it? The death chill. The power to kill by fear itself. Your veins turn to rivers of ice. Your bones crack. And the last thing you see is your own tear ducts freezing up. Like, literally scared to death? <laughs> so cool. <laughs>